Okay, in this video, we're going to look at the exciting world of backtest and urea. This is where we see how well it works and how we can make it work better. So this is a first test video, and as we do other sessions, we'll add to this, but this is to get you started, and that's the most important thing. The bottom line is, this is a practical skill, and the sooner you can get you using an EA and doing this process, the better. Of course, there are six keys. Of course, there are six key stages which we've covered before. We're assuming we've already got an EA, and we're already at this stage where we've got a prototype. So we're going to move into full back testing next. And obviously, at each of these stages, we need to be able to identify what we're trying to achieve, how we're going to do it, what determines success, and that obviously indicates or dictates when we can move to the next level or file the EA and move on to another one. So we're going to cover the criteria, etc., in separate videos, as well as some of the more advanced backtesting techniques, such as optimization. But for now, we need to backtest our EA prototype parameters. So all of the things that are the default settings on our EA, and of course, make the requirement to create a result set that justifies a forward test. So we're wanting to create the best result on this back test so we can then test it in a live market situation. So we perform back tests over a significant number of trades or time period. So we would suggest at least 12 months, uh, possibly even two years. And this is likely to involve some optimization and perhaps some system refinement where you go back and tweak the EA variables to some degree. So we're defining performance benchmarks and we're performing a back test not only on one instrument but over multiple instruments to see what we can find. Remember, an EA, you can have several EAs checking out different instruments on different time frames under the one model. And then we're going to retest after each refinement and optimization. And ultimately, we're going to hone down on which instruments are most positive for a forward test. And obviously, we're going to do that based on performance benchmarks, such as profitability and drawdown. So that's the overall picture with backtesting. And so let's get into the practical side of things. You've already got an EA, I would assume, uh, that you've uploaded onto your MT5 platform. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you the process step by step. So, of course, the first thing we do is we open our strategy tester and it will usually bring you to this screen, first of all, which just is different options you've got, plus, uh, for reference in the future, tests that you've already performed. We're going to just click on single and this will bring us to this screen here. Now, we're going to spend a little time going through these settings. So we're going to use one of our EAs and for this, we're going to use zigzag two. Uh, and we're going to test it on the DAX 30, uh, although we can add whatever symbol we want on an hourly time frame. And again, we can choose the time frame we want to test on. And we're going to do it from the beginning of 2022 through to the beginning of 2024. So a two year period. Don't worry about forward testing at this stage. And if we look at delays, we're going to do zero latency, ideal execution. And our modeling, we've got a few choices here. We can pull down the drawdown menu. Probably the most reliable in terms of accuracy results is either every tick or every tick based on real ticks. The first is probably the quickest. And then we put in our deposit, our currency, and the leverage that we can use. And in this optimization, box here you can again see this gives us options we'll come on to this when we look at optimizing but for now we're just going to disable this so having set the overall parameters and the ea and how we're going to test it and when we're going to test it we can then go into the specific inputs so we click on this inputs tab and you'll see here that there's a range of inputs okay and you can change these so we can change our lot size from 0.3 to 0.2 we're just going to keep it at 0.3 now before we start you should know what all these parameters do at this stage we're only going to use a few of these we're going to use the fast and the slow zigzag periods we're going to use the differential rate which is an atr above and really the essence of this ea is that it closes above the fast zigzag rate period 
we're having a time of day that it starts on so it doesn't start trading before the first hour now this is in minutes so 60 would be a so one o'clock platform time when the bar closes the price has got to be over 65 percent of the range of the bar I meaning it's in the top part of the bar we're using volume on this as well so we want it to be above the previous bars volume from the last hour and then we've got our exits we're not going to use a partial close but we are going to use a time exit setting on this so we've set this to 920 so to work that out you're just going to a calculator so 920 divided by 60 it's closing everything down at the 50 hour so just after 1500 on the platform using a moving average as a trail so 25 ema and it's got a close beneath that and then we've also got a take profit setting which is three times atr and a stop loss setting which is one and a half times atr so we've got all of these parameters already in and then we can click on our start button and what happens then is the back test will run you can see that here we've got the back test in progress this green line will tell you how far it is as well as the time and we can already if we click on the graph setting see how the equity and balance are doing the balance is the blue line the equity is the green line you can see this is actually performing quite well over the course of the two years we're now into the middle part of 2023 and that's the back test finished so you can see a very nice move up so remember it was only 0.3 of a lot so if we look at our back test results you can see we made 1050 profit and we had a drawdown the worst drawdown at any stage during that two years was 143 dollars so that's a very low and acceptable drawdown we had a win rate of 57 percent this traded long only because that's the setting we clicked and you can see our average profit was 35 our average loss when we lost a trade was 23 so those are a good set of figures we have some more information here which we can talk about at a future stage but this is done on 105 different trades during that two-year period so our first job is to see if we can try and improve these at all so we can go to inputs and we'll maybe change a couple of settings just to show you so maybe we'll make this moving average exit a bit tighter and move it to 15 and then we can run the back test again and see if it improves on our results remember it was 1050 the first time so i'm showing you this live this isn't me pulling figures out of the air you can see it actually running the back test as we talk and again checking on the graph make sure it's doing okay and that looks all right uh, and we're already above that level you can see there it's moving very nicely higher once the back test is complete you'll see the back test tab, tab pops up and we can click on this and you can see there's another hundred dollars we've made there the drawdown is now at 1.2 which is great we haven't really altered the win rate but if you look at the loss rate it's dropped a little bit and that's exactly what we wanted to do by tightening that stop so let's try one more let's try to alter in the atr diff rate to 0 0.1 rather than 0 0.2 and see if that makes a difference so again we shall do this let the back test run and as i said before we're waiting for this back test tab to pop up here and you will see the graph is looking not so good so if we put the back test on so the equity graph isn't looking good the back test is looking significantly worse uh, so that changing that setting didn't work so we'll put it back to uh, this is a 0.2 so that means it was 0.2 of an atr over the top of the, the fast zigzag period and let's try one more setting let's try entering a little later maybe at 120 so that's two hours into the trading day so we're limiting the time we enter so we'll, we'll press the start button again you can see it all happening and we'll get in there graph is looking back as it was pretty healthily uh, continuously on the upside and our back test is completed and there you go 1145 that's about as good as we're going to get i think for this without doing some significant work on it but that's a great start now just to reiterate some of these the key numbers we're having a look at so in terms of profit we're looking at our, our net profit we're, and we're looking at our win loss metrics so we're looking at our win rate our average win our average loss 
and also the maximum loss as well let's just pop back and i'll show you what i mean by that so you can see there our maximum loss on any trade was 61 and our highest profit was 125 if this was particularly high it might have been one specific trade i won't go and hunt that out and see what happened in that instance but that's usually an event issue in this case it doesn't appear to be particularly erroneous and remember it's not the win rate on its own that counts it's the combination of win rate and the average profit average loss you can have a 90 percent win rate and yet if you're only making a dollar and losing ten dollars you're not going to make any money uh, so what we want is a good combination of win rate average profit average loss so ideally you're looking for over 50 percent and you're looking for your average profit to beat your average loss just a general sort of rule of thumb you can see this meets our criteria now remember we're only risking at any time during those two years 125 dollars so that's the worst drawdown so if we look at our graph it was probably around this point here so hardly a massive blip from the high to the low and just to reinforce what we want to make sure is that this equity drawdown is not dramatically high as well so you want these equity drawdown is, is going to be slightly higher usually than the balance drawdown but we don't want these outrageously different if it is that means there's usually something wrong with the ea so balance drawdown is on closed trades only equity is if you like a running total of where you are so as a general rule i would look for a five times profit compared to drawdown so if we look here the average drawdown or the balance drawdown is 125 uh, the average profit is nearly nine times that so it's well within those parameters as i said the best thing you can do is to get clicking i've showed you how to alter each individual one now when we move on to optimization we can check multiple parameters at the same time now obviously that's going to require a heap more computer work but we can start to check different moving averages in the one test different time frames in the one test i hope that makes sense but it will do the best way to do this is to get testing so use an ea you have look at the settings run an initial back test and then see what happens when you change some of the settings so after our profit remember the other things we're looking at is drawdown we're checking drawdown on balance and equity and remember percentage is relative to account size so if you've got two percent on a ten thousand dollar account it'll be 20 percent on a one thousand dollar account so as important to look at the dollars aim for less than a five percent on a ten thousand account is a good yardstick to start with but obviously the lower the better we also look at trade frequency we want a reasonable number of trades to make a decision on something's only traded three times it's unlikely to give us results that are meaningful whereas if we start to get into the 50s even the hundreds then all of a sudden we've got a meaningful set of data to suggest that this back test may be more robust so beware the limited number of trades and there are other factors that we'll cover later on such as sharp ratios recovery factors and profit factors for now all of these in positive territory is a initial good yardstick so your actions from this is follow through commit to taking action at every stage of the ea process this is practical skill so active learning is critical if you're keen on seeing what EAs could do for you going forward and review the content of this video and of course you know where we are if you have any questions that you need to ask for clarity most importantly get started do your first back test and in the next video we'll move on to that optimization i.e testing a number of parameters at a different time with one click trade safe and see you again soon bye bye for now